Hello everyone and welcome to episode 13 of my beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. In the previous episode we looked at how to build an uncrewed probe, specifically an uncrewed probe capable of landing onto Minmus' surface. And in this episode we're going to talk about getting that probe to Minmus. Now we've already gone to the moon, so I'm really going to focus on what makes Minmus different. And the main thing that makes it different is Minmus' inclined orbit. How do we deal with that? The short answer is we need to put ourselves into an appropriate parking orbit. So how do we launch into the parking orbit that we need? We're also going to be talking a little bit about correction burns. How to minimize the correction burns that you need to do mid-course and also the fact that correction burns are going to be about the normal and radial components of our maneuver nodes, something we haven't talked about yet. Well, our vessel is sitting right on the pad, so let's get started. And our first job with this is going to be putting it into a low curb and parking orbit, just like we did when we went to the moon. So I'm not going to be spending a lot of time about getting to orbit. If you need some help with getting to orbit, I do have a video on that. Link coming up right here. But what I want to talk about is what makes going to Minmus a little bit different. So for that, we're going to go out to map view. And as I said, we've already gone to the moon. So here's the moon's orbit and the moon's orbit is nicely positioned directly over Kerbin's equator. And that makes it that's like, oh, OK, if I just launch due east, my parking orbit will be right in the same plane as the moon orbit. And that works out great. It makes the transfer a bit easier. But if we go out to Minmus we can see that Minmus's orbit is inclined. Uh, it is at an angle to Kerbin's equator. Specifically, it's at an angle of six degrees to the equator. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can handle this. You could just launch straight out towards the east like you would normally do, and then go out and do your transfer out towards Minmus, but what you'll likely find is that your transfer orbit will end up missing Minmus's orbit. And then you'll have to, at some point along here, make another burn to kind of pull that trajectory down so it intersects with Minmus's orbit. And that's extra fuel. And also, it's, it's harder. I find it harder to just flat out do it that way. The simplest way to make your transfer out to Minmus is to make sure that when you go into your parking orbit, you are already inclined at the same angle that Minmus's orbit is inclined at. Then you can make your transfer anywhere you want and you'll be guaranteed to hit Minmus's orbit. Sounds like it's complicated, but it actually isn't. Let's go through how we're going to accomplish that. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to center our view on Kerbin by simply double clicking onto Kerbin so that our view is centered right there on Kerbin. We're going to scroll back out and we're going to adjust our camera where I'm right clicking and dragging to adjust the camera so that the moon's orbit is exactly edge on. Then we're going to scroll out a little bit further until we see Mimmus's orbit. And now we're going to again right click and drag, but this time I'm dragging either left or right. Right now I'm dragging to the right until Minmus's orbit is also exactly edge on. What we've done in accomplishing that is identify where the ascending and descending nodes are. The ascending and descending nodes are where the Minmus's orbit crosses the plane of the moon's orbit. And remember again, the moon's orbit is also Kerbin's equator. We call this part of the node, it would be right here, the equatorial descending node. It's descending because we are moving towards the south on the screen that is going down. On the opposite side of the planet is the equatorial ascending node where the orbit is on its way up above the plane of Kerbin's equator. We want to launch at either the equatorial ascending or equatorial descending node. Now the issue that we have is, is if I scroll down here, Right here, oh my gosh, my mouse is being goofy. Right here is our launch site. And you can remember that Kerbin rotates towards the east. It's rotating in this direction. So we're actually moving away from the equatorial 
the sending node. So we're actually going to want to launch on the other side. So I'm going to spin our camera here around 180 degrees and we're going to repeat the whole process again. So again, tilt your camera until the moon's orbit is exactly edge on or as good as you can get it. And then scroll out until Minmus's orbit is, you can see the whole orbit. And then again, right click and drag until Minmus's orbit is also edge on. Oh, that's good enough, okay? And so we're gonna scroll back in. So right here is where we want to launch. Moreover, we can see from Minmus's orbit that at this moment, we want to go towards the north. We're at the equatorial ascending node. So that means we want to launch at this moment and we want to launch six degrees towards the north of east. Now let's take a look at the nav ball. Remember east is 90 degrees on the nav ball. It's a little bit disorienting, but north, it seems weird, is at the bottom of the nav ball. So we want to go launch six degrees in the direction north from east. North, notice that the angles are getting smaller as we move towards the north, so we need to subtract six from 90. So 90 minus six is 84 degrees. I have videos that talk about this a little bit, and again, I'll put a link up there on the right, but you actually want to go a little bit more than just six degrees north of east. So actually, instead of going at a heading of 84 degrees, I want to go at a heading of 83 degrees. We can keep track of our heading down here under our HDG, that is our actual heading. I would like, as I'm launching, to go 80, to have this heading being 83 degrees. And that should get me an inclination that's very close to six degrees. Okay, let's see how, well, first of all, we got a time warp to the right point. <laughs> let's not forget that one. So we're gonna do some time warping. Again, I'm just going until we are exactly in the center here, that's very, very close right there. We're gonna go back to here, gonna put on SAS, we're gonna throttle up, and we're going to launch. And again, if you need help with getting into orbit, you know, I have other videos on that, so I'm gonna kinda of skip over that part, but I am letting myself build up some speed to about 50 meters per second. Then we're gonna start pitching towards the east, but what I also want to do is go a little bit towards the north, let that kind of settle out. I'm looking at my angle here, and again, I would like that to be 83 degrees. And don't be afraid to revert and try again. It can take a little bit of practice. It can be a little bit fiddly. You are looking at not only what your heading is now, but also the rate at which you are falling over your pitch. So it can get a bit fiddly, but you know, don't get it. Okay, I'm getting close to my apoapsis here, and we're gonna cut it. Okay, because my apoapsis got over 80 kilometers. You can see how you did by going to Advanced Orbital Info and clicking on that, and I can see my inclination is 6.5 degrees. So a little bit, I went a little bit too far to the north. We can sort of try and fix that when we get up there. Okay, so we're very close to our apoapsis here. Again, I'm watching the time here. I know I want to be a little bit towards the north, so I'm looking at my heading. I'm going to put my heading at about 85 degrees. Remember, I want a final heading of 84, 6 degrees north. And unfortunately, you can't watch both the inclination and your periapsis, which is a little unfortunate. We're going a little, we'll see how this goes. I gotta do myself a throttle here. Again, what we're doing here, of course, is we're bringing up our periapsis up to 80 kilometers or in about there. That I, I what are, what what is our inclination at now? It's 5.2. I did it too far. Whoop. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Let's just qualify that a little bit. Oh, okay. Speaking of not perfect, my orbit is not perfect. That's okay. <laughs> we'll let that go. So it doesn't need to be perfect. We ended up with I don't know what's our orbit here. 76.5 by 92.9 kilometers. Not the greatest. If we go to advanced, our inclination is not 5.3 degrees, but it's better than nothing. Paying attention to this kind of stuff. Let's ditch our booster stage here. So there it goes. 
I'm going to turn this towards the north like that in order to just expose our solar panels a little bit. We're also going to extend our antennas here a little bit. We don't need them right yet, but we will as we get closer to Minmus. And we're going to take a look at getting this thing to Minmus. So you can see we are in this inclined orbit. And if we scroll out, that inclined orbit is a reasonable match <laughs> to the same plane as Minmus's orbit. Okay, so let's go for our Minmus insertion. So it's actually very similar to the moon. Um, you got Minmus will go about a sixth of an orbit as you get yourself out there. So we're gonna put a node right around, oh, it's right around where our craft happens to be. Of course, we can move this uh, later. And then we're gonna just drag this out to get it fairly rough. Another thing we should be doing as well is setting Minmus as a target. There we go. And of course, we can also go down, if we select the node once again, we can go down here and we can do the clicking on this to bring this out be a little bit more precise and we can see our little close encounter indicators there if we right click on them it tells us that we're missing by about 2.6 thousand kilometers so we're gonna start adjusting the time we'll click one way uh, oh that's making it worse there we go we just got our, our encounter and you can see we got this encounter, even though my orbit was hardly perfect and my inclination was hardly perfect, we did get into our encounter without having to do additional burns here. It makes our lives much, much easier. Okay, let's focus our view on Minmus. And if we're going to do a landing, people have a bit of a natural inclination, I think, to say, oh, okay, we're going to hit Minmus and then and then you know we'll do our landing. It's actually much, much easier if you put yourself into a low orbit about Minmus first. So we're gonna adjust this by clicking again on the node so we get our fine tools here. And we're gonna just start playing around with this. Let's see, that. Ah, if I give myself a little bit more prograde, I can see that gets me close to Minmus. I can play around with getting the timing and you can play with this I, I think we're pretty darn, you know what? I think it was actually pretty close as it was. Now we're coming a bit towards the north. So we're missing Minmus a little bit. We're going to have to make a bit of another burn here, but it's going to be trivial compared to what it would have been otherwise. All right, so we got ourselves a 917 meter per second burn. Uh, that's coming up in 26 minutes. So let's do that. All right, we're about a minute away from when we are to do the burn again. Remember how this start burn in this splits the length of our burn, which is three minutes and 11 seconds because our engine here isn't exactly powerful. Um, but it splits that burn on either side of this node, the time to the node. Uh, I've gotten into the settings and showed you how to turn this on, but actually since 1.10, this is now on by default, which I think is a good thing. Okay, let's put ourselves onto the blue maneuver node ready to do this I've talked about using maneuver nodes in the past so we're not going to talk about it in great detail right now but when this gets down to zero we're gonna punch it so two one go and now again we can relax there's no rush <laughs> this is gonna take a little bit we're out here map view for the tail end of this burn so that we can watch it and really tweak this encounter with Minmus you can see our apoapsis coming up quickly. It actually starts accelerating very quickly towards the end, so be on the alert for that. I'm going to start reducing throttle, in fact, right now. We'll just a little bit, put it back on there. And increase throttle again a little bit. At this point on, it's not too important to stay exactly on the blue maneuver node, but I'm going to really start reducing this throttle. Here, you can start to see it coming up. In fact, I'm gonna start, stop right about there, just a little bit short, because what I want to do, let's delete this, is I want to bring this periapsis 
down onto this side of Minmus, on the left side of Minmus, and close to the equator, and I would love it to be about an altitude of about 10 kilometers or so. So we need to perform another burn in order to accomplish that. This is going to be a correction burn. And the best place to make correction burns is right in around the middle of your trajectory, somewhere in this zone around here. So, and exactly where it is actually isn't that big a deal. So I'm just gonna click, you know, around the middle here. We're gonna add a maneuver. And for the first time, we're gonna get into some of these other directions on these maneuver nodes. So if I scroll back in here on Minmus, I need to bring this periapsis down towards the bottom of the screen, which is south. That is the normal directions, these purple triangly icons. The, this direction here is the anti-normal, and this direction here is the positive normal. I need to go anti-normal towards the south. So I'm going to take this note, I'm going to drag it just a little bit. You see, it doesn't take much to get it to move quite a bit. And in fact, uh, well, let's see, can we keep, oh, 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 we're getting very close here. Okay. <laughs> and the other thing I want to do right now, I'm hitting Minmus. I certainly don't want to do that. I also need to bring it out this way. In order to accomplish that, we're going to use these light blue parts. Let's get out here so you can actually see them. There they are. These two here. These are the radial components, the sort of sideways components of the burn. We have radially out and radially in. Now it's kind of hard to, dr just because of the position of everything, to drag these while looking at Minmus because they're just edge on. So what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to click on our graphical display down here and we're going to just start tweaking this outwards. And again, it does not take much. There's our periapsis, okay? Again, I would love this to get down near the equator. You can see uh, Minmus is yellow orbit line so getting it around there would be good so we need to come a little bit more towards the south and you can tell that was way too much so we're going to bring down the scale a little bit we're going to come back up now we're hitting it again we're going to come radially out a little bit more i'm going to right click on there 839 meters above the surface is really bad i would love that to be about 10 there we go that's close enough 12 kilometers is going to do just fine, okay? So we're going to do this little bit of a tweak. Now, if you wanted to, notice I really put no effort into the timing of this, and you'll find out that the timing really makes very little difference. If you want to play with it yourself, go right ahead. I could probably bring this burn down a tenth of a meter per second or so, but what I really want to draw attention to is how small this burn is. It's 5.2 meters per second. And I want you to compare that to that maximum that we saw on the Delta V map last episode. We have saved ourselves a lot of fuel and a lot of effort by just paying attention to our orbital insertion at the very, very beginning. Okay, well, let's get out there and perform that burn. All right, here we are. We're getting close to about 10 minutes to the burn. To be honest, again, timing for this one really isn't essential. So you could be probably hours either way. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but we're kind of in the vicinity. But what I want to draw attention to here is the burn time, 0.9 seconds. This is a really, really tiny burn. And for really tiny burns, I like to adjust the thrust on this engine. So I'm going to grab this engine and I'm going to look at the thrust limiter and I'm going to pull that way down to help me just do this burn more precisely. Conversely, rather than doing that, you can also, if I put this back onto, how can I get turn this view off? There it is. Back to, so I can see these indicators here. Actually, I didn't have to show, but I want to show you this. If I click right, or the cap lock button, it's the cap lock button that toggles those either way. Notice how they go blue. The blue indicates that you are now in fine control. That says fine control on the throttle and fine control actually with maneuvering roll yaw pitch as well. Personally, I would prefer to just toggle down the thrust because that gives me more exactly what I want to do. But the game does give you this option to put it into fine control like here and then the game's deciding what it's moving for you. You can decide which way you like. Personally, I rarely use this. I just always forget it's kind of there and instead just adjust things myself. Okay, let's get ready to do our burn. 
I'm not looking at the time to start at all because I honestly really don't care. And this one, literally, you can take as much time as you want with. Pretty much, anyway. I mean, I guess if you took days to do it, you might be in trouble, but... We're going to bring this down. And again, what I want is for that to be right at Mimis' equator or thereabouts, and periapsis in around 10 kilometers or so. Oh, well, how's that look? I'm happy with that. That's perfectly fine. We'll leave it. Okay, we're going to put ourselves again back. Always think about solar panels. It's, that's the easiest way I find with these to muff up the mission is to forget about exposing the solar panels. So I'm turning it again towards the north so the solar panels are guaranteed to have some exposure. Let's get ourselves to Mimis' sphere of influence. Boink, we have now officially encountered Minmis. So let's get back to here. Here is Minmis, the nice green snowball, all waiting there for us. And of course, we got science to collect, and then we're going to get ourselves down to the surface. And that's going to be the focus of our next episode. So I'm going to thank you for watching, and hope to see you then.